What's going on, guys? NL10 off script here, and welcome to episode five. This is actually episode five the of the, the of the NL10 off script podcast. Today, Richard is not beside me. I have got someone completely different. Some person you've only saw once before, and that was if you remember. You, you remember that one? The workout videos. No, that was a video that never ended up happening. But I actually still have all Spoiler the. Alert. I still have all the videos from that, and, and the editing <laughs> file and everything. I still have it all. You ready for this? It's already rolling, man. I know. I was asking you if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready, man. This is the power of editing. Oh, I thought that. I mean, why edit it? You, 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 want, you want to see this? Watch this. What's going on, guys? NL10 off script here, and today, we hitting the gym. But uh, no, it was when you got me the Xbox for Christmas that year, and I did the unboxing. You walked in the middle of it talking about your jeans that mom got you, or they're like girly jeans and they, they fit real tight. You remember that? No. I'm kind oh of my God! I see, see, I'm ah, aha! You've been doing some research, but not quite, not quite enough, there, good sir. Yeah, not, not nearly enough, apparently. Oh girly no! Girly jeans and Xbox on videos. Yeah, you were still babyface at that time. It was bad. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like the, the salt and pepper is better than the baby face. I, I thought about going baby face recently, but that just isn't going to happen at all. But uh, for everyone that doesn't know, that's never saw this man, this man is my brother. Hello. This is Mr. Allen. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first? Um, and coincidentally enough, today... We uh, we didn't know this was gonna happen, but we matched. Uh, I I just I I got bad, I got out of church and he met me here, and we matched today. So I, I thought it's only fitting, only fitting, that we start off in a way. And I was gonna kind of put this later on, but I want to ask you, good sir, because you've been on this earth longer than I have, eleven years longer than I have. Thirty three in total. Yeah, I'm at twenty two, and you're at the oof man. There is a we're getting old, dude. I'm getting old. You're barely drinking age. Speaking of drinking, today we are drinking lovely Diet Pepsi. Free ad. I don't know if you could hear that. Very little. Good stuff. Good stuff. <coughs> Sponsor. But anyway, I want, <laughs> uh, I want to ask you today, good sir, how exactly did you become a North Carolina Tar Heel fan? Oh man, uh, it's been been a long time. The reason I ask that is because I am a Tar Heel fan because you were a Tar Heel fan because our grandfather was a Tar was the Tar Heel fan. Kind of started well, it I off. Mean, that's, I mean, if we're if we're uh, going that direction, uh, it was definitely our grandpa. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my first memory ever of watching the Tar Heels. Uh, you know, the Christmas party we had at, uh, you know, the Christmas get-togethers we'd have at, oh, you, uh, uh, Sissy and at David's. Sissy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a long, long time ago. Um, my grandpa, and I can't remember his name. He's passed away now. Uh, he was the Duke fan. I uh, see. I don't, I don't uh, remember. It's been a long time, even for me. I can't remember his name. Anyway, the for whatever reason, Duke was playing somebody, and then, like I said, this is a really long time ago. Yeah. Like I was knee high to a grasshopper, there probably. You go. And um, <clears throat> the Duke, I can't. God, I wish I could remember his name. Anyway, he was watching the Duke game. Yeah, and my. Our grandpa, we, we was on that, you know, the, you know, you had the garage. Mm -hmm. You walked in, then you know, the dining room was here, and yeah. that little side living room over here. Yeah. Well, they, he was in his little uh, motorized wheelchair, and, like sitting in front of the TV watching it. Yeah. And Paul was in there, and he was, I wouldn't say watching, but he was in the room while it was on. And then they were going back and forth, North Carolina this, Duke this, blah 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 blah. And <laughs> that's when I guess, I guess you can say that's when I got in introduced to the North Carolina. Duke rivalry, and <clears throat> I didn't really know the guy, the, the Duke fan, but I knew my grandpa's, and it's just 
Oh, yeah, it just caught clicked. on. But if my grandpa likes North Carolina, well, I'm going to like North Carolina. Yeah, because you got your fishing traits from him. You got the North Carolina thing from him. You, he got, taught, a lot of, you got a lot of things from him. I mean, he taught me how to fish. Taught me which sports teams to like, which sports teams definitely not to like. <laughs> uh, he was groomed. Can you use that word these days? Groomed? groomed? De- it depends on the context. Anyway, so <laughs> we won't get into that. Um, but, yeah, uh, I mean, all the need to knows, uh, that's, yeah. that's where I got them from. And I have to say, you know, I didn't even get to go to Chapel Hill until our our game last year when we went to uh, went, we went to the Virginia game, and I had watched the Tar Heels a little bit as a as a kid, mostly through you, mm-hmm. and a little bit as a teenager. I'd say probably a little bit more after 2016. I started watching a little bit yeah. more. You know, we had the buzzer beater that that knocked us out of the national championship that year. Yeah, feeling over Chris yeah. Jenkins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I called in the work the next day. <laughs> I forgot about that, dude. I forgot you. you did. I, I literally went to work. I was unloading. I was uh, unloading trucks mm-hmm. at UPS. So I went to work there. That was my part time gig. Then. I had the full time gig at Walmart. Oh, I got off of work at UPS and I was like, like I was sulking, like <laughs> literally sulking because the North Carolina lost on a buzzer beater from practically half practically court. half court <clears throat> after Marcus Page hit an insane three pointer to tie the game. <clears throat> I remember sitting on the bed and I was like, Marcus Page hit the three. Went absolutely crazy. Figured I was going to wake up the whole house. Um, and I was sitting on the bed. I was like, this is going overtime. There's no way we're losing this game in overtime. Because North Carolina had all the momentum. Came to, came back from being down yeah. to five, six points in the last couple of minutes. Villanova was on the ropes. Marcus Page hit the big three. And then... Chris Jenkins threw up a prayer, and unfortunately, it was answered. But and I just like I I felt myself just like sitting on the edge of bed, just sink. <laughs> <clears throat> like all the gravity in the world was just like forcing me to sink in on into the edge of the bed, like I was going to disappear into the edge of the bed. I just I think I sat there for like 35, 40 minutes, just staring at the TV. Like oh yeah, it was, oh couldn't yeah, couldn't comprehend it. If you guys have you you guys have obviously never been around when or never saw us when we get together for a North Carolina game, I only have one video of it, and I'm going to insert it right about this time when North Carolina. This was back in 2018. It was the it was a year or maybe the year of Mac Brown coming back. We faced Duke. Yep, three years ago. Duke had the victory bell. Duke had a chance. Was on the one yard line and had a chance to beat us and keep the victory bell. Mac Brown's return soil Mac Brown's return and everything. Running back got it. He lobbed it up and threw it right to our linebacker and we ran it back and, and it that was that was game. It was game right there and we went ballistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna insert that somewhere in this in this portion. Oh it was beautiful. Come on uh, man No oh, oh! It was beautiful. Chaz Surratt. Oh. Yes, Chaz Surratt. Is Quar- still- quarterback turned linebacker. Oh, yeah. And it- ended up being one of th- – probably one of the best players on our defense for the two years that he was there. Yeah. And so, what I was saying earlier is, you know, the first time I got to go to <clears throat> North Carolina was this past year when we went to the, the Virginia game. And it was me, you, and we had to. We, we said we got to take Paul. It's got to mm-hmm. happen. Absolutely. That yep. was the whole premise of it. Is we're taking Paul. You come to me about it. And you say, hey, I got tickets. This is how much they are. I, we're taking Paul, and we're going. I said, all right, cool. I'd never been. I wanted to go. And uh, I was even talking to Wes about this the other day. You know, he's a Clemson fan, mm-hmm. and all of his family went to Clemson. I mean, his parents met there, everything. And he was talking about you know the last time they got to go together and how much that meant to him. And I said, the same thing goes for us. And I started explaining, you know, when we were on the way 
to North Carolina, Paul told us that this was it. This was this was it for him. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that was that was it. Family health problems and right. He you know. he was like, this is probably going to be my last hoorah. Yeah, and we were listening to the podcast on the way there and saying, man, we ain't got no shot at this. This is we're about to get ran out of the building. Yeah, it was a lot of the, a lot Virginia of the, was big last year. Uh, analysis and a lot of the predictions had Virginia beaten. North Carolina at home, and it, man, was gonna it, be bad. That, it didn't happen that way. Mm-mm. Man, North, North Carolina, Carolina went, put dropped, it on them. What I, I said, they dropped sixty, and they almost did. They dropped like fifty six or something mm-hmm. that night. Some of the most amazing clicking oh, on all cylinders. But I thought what was amazing is you know we have three generations of people all kind of coming from him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and here we are enjoying that moment to get all oh, beautiful games, some great plays, some great – like that uh, Joffrey Brown mm-hmm. catch in the end zone when he was – was it Joffrey Brown or uh, uh, or was it Josh Downs that caught that pass where he was basically sliding and caught it right there in like the, the corner, top right corner from Sam. What was that – was that Joffrey Brown or is that uh, – Joffrey Brown had the Antoine long – Green. I think Chaffrey Brown had the long catch, had, had that catch that he ran for like 60 yards, got a touchdown. But that may have been Josh Downs with that like miraculous catch. He might, yeah, it might have been. But uh, that, and they brought back the old throwback jerseys too. So you know, Paul got to see the his 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 version of the North Carolina yeah, Tar Heels. I actually old, had that jersey on that night. You did. I had the deep navy blue one, which I still like that one. But uh, I thought that was amazing, uh, and that that's a moment that'll live well, forever. Yeah, I mean, just out, just outside, but even before the game, you got me, you, Franklin Street, and our grandfather like walking down Franklin Street, going into the stores. You know, the we ate at the Sutton's drugstore. Yeah, Sutton's. Yeah, I mean Old Sutton's drugstore, one of the oldest drugstores in the state. Getting to sit down, see all the pictures. Oh, there's guy. Seeing all the pictures from color pictures the black and white pictures of all the players coaches famous people that's come in and out of there sit in the same seats as them you know you just get to take it all in Mm -hmm. and then so you get off franklin street and then you're walking on the campus then and that campus is beautiful if you've never been there and have never saw it look at pictures of it the campus is beautiful i'm telling you if you are a tar heel fan even if you're not you have to go just walk the campus and if you get to go to the football game or basketball game you got you got to take the time and take your family up there to go do it yeah that i mean just there's 100 year old buildings there's 400 year old trees oh dude those trees the, are massive the old well you can you're you drink water from the the original well still mm mm-hmm. mhm it, it it is something to behold, and I think what's the coolest part is if you are going to the football game. Here's the cool thing: you don't know you're at the stadium until you're walking through the gates. I love that part. Yeah, you can't I mean, see the stadium at all. It's literally surrounded by pine trees, mm-hmm. and you're just walking. You know, you're walking towards the general direction. Then there's just a path. Then all of a sudden, it just the trees part and. There's a stadium. You're Blue standing. Heaven. You're standing right there at the gates. Keenan Stadium. Oh, geez, it, it is beautiful. And anything, nothing's better than let's say North Carolina wins a football game. You get to hear Carolina victory, and then you get to walk out and see that beautiful blue bell tower get lit up. Oh man, yep. that that bell tower mm-hmm. is beautiful. It's like 200 feet tall. The thing's huge, and it's it's beautiful once it's lit up, especially at night. Oh man. Uh, yeah, I've, I've only been on two college campuses North Carolina's and South Carolina's and ju- just comparing those two one's a city and one's a college campus mm-hmm. one, one doesn't even feel like a campus and one feels like it feels Home. like yeah. I was about to say it feels it's it's in a perfect place because it's not a busy place. Chapel Hill's not huge. It's like down. It's like a nice small town downtown feel with a massive college in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. It just it's it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and 
I'll continue to go back there uh, and, and love every minute of it. I, uh, it, it's, I'm glad. Well, I mean, you know what? they kick off this Saturday, Saturday, eight o'clock, twenty seventh, right mm-hmm. against uh, Florida A and M. This Saturday, Florida A and M, eight yeah. o'clock. That that that's gonna be fun. Um, but you know, there's an interesting story here. I got something I want to bring up. So Richard's on here with me as well. I, it's mm-hmm. funny. I have. You, Richard, Tori, if you count Coker, that's four people in my life are the same age, same year, 33, 11 years older than me that I talk to. And <laughs> what I think is hilarious is that Richard, and he's mentioned this, I think, last podcast, he's got a problem with his ear. He's got a, I don't know what it is. He says he's, he's basically deaf mm-hmm. in one ear. Mm-hmm. You're the exact same way. Yeah, I am. What happened there? Because I know the story. I know briefly the story of like your ear ruptured. Yeah, yeah we'll, randomly. we'll clarify this if you've listened to the previous podcast about my ear just randomly rupturing. Yeah, yeah. That's not it. That's false. Oh, okay. So I didn't I was, know. I didn't when know. I was little, I used to keep ear infections. I've had tubes in my ears twice. Maybe three times. Mm. Um, then one of the times I had an ear infection rubbed out of my left ear and my eardrum ruptured, then uh, I just can't quite hear anymore. I know this. I know mom said that. My wife were... says I have selective hearing, but I really can't <laughs> hear. <laughs> oh, I can see that. I, I can see that. Uh, yeah, you know, I might, I might agree with you. She literally say, well, I've asked you to do something five times, but. I haven't heard you. Might be selective I'm hearing. I'm just saying. You know, you never know. I, but might be selective hearing. It's not selective. <laughs> like, if I have, like, you can ask her. The TV is always loud. She'll come in the house. Ha- like, if I'm home, if I get home before her, she'll come in the house and she'll be like, oh, my God, why is the TV so loud? I can't hear. I, I tell you. I can hear a little bit. Out of my left ear, and I hear normally out of my right ear. I know uh, the the part that always gets me is we'll be somewhere, let's say, you, you know, because we're both UPS drivers. Sometimes we meet for lunch if I'm in your area. He'll turn on a video or turn on his game, whatever he's playing on his phone, and I swear you could probably hear that thing from here to Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> Can you? And people just look around like, "What's going on?" <laughs> Oh man, I, I just I think hear. it's I, I think it's hilarious that 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 is the case. But hey, hey, I'm, I'm I'm thankfully glad I never had those problems. Thankfully, yeah, I don't I I don't know why. My so far, Bryson he doesn't he he doesn't have ear infections like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Carson never had ear infections like that. So. Do you still have them from time to time, or does it no, just kind of ended when you were a kid? No, it. I guess it just ended when I was a kid. Yeah, because I know you still don't like you don't. You have a pet peeve about people touching your ears. Yeah, I don't like people. I don't like people touching my ears or anything along that. Like you don't. You don't care for that at all. Mm-mm. No, um, like if I like my allergies are acting up or I have like a head cold. Yeah. Then this ear will like. I don't know how to explain it. It'll. Like you know, when you go to the mountains and your like your, ears pop, your ears start popping. Yeah. Then, it, sometimes your you, your ears will get off of equilibrium with each other. Yeah, yeah, I know like what you're talking about. One yeah. will sound diff- You'll hear same sound, but it sounds different one than it does the other. One when that happens, I start swallowing, like trying to get it. To, swallowing yeah. or yeah, or doing something. No, like, I've never done that before. <laughs> yeah. To try to like suck know, air back through pressure. Yeah. The, the, the your station tubes that drain from your ears drain into your throat. Yeah. That, yeah. So all that pressure will change the pressure of your ears, and you'll see me do that a lot. Cause I have I have noticed this, you do that. This ear will just pop or lose pressure. I don't know. I'm not a medical expert. Huh? Oh, that's pretty cool. Do you have like a Do you have like a hole in the ear? Cone I don't think or? there's a hole anymore. Oh, you don't <clears> anymore, <throat> but there was. Well, yeah, it ruptured, but I think yeah. I've had tubes since then. Oh, okay. I was about to say I didn't know if they it, if it. No. I don't. I don't really know what happens after a rupture. Does it just heal up and yeah, I think it, so. and, and, and fill out? But you know, you brought up Bryson. 
you he's now what three going on four? Yeah, it'll be four in October. And you've had a stepson now for whew, let's see how long eight years. Eight years. Well, I, that, that's funny. You were talking about how how many years I've had a stepson. Uh-huh. Um, me and Ashley was talking. We was talking about something this morning, getting ready before we went to go eat, and uh, we got on the subject. Some how long we've been together. I was like, what has it been like? seven years she was like no it's been nine really? i was like nine years i was like are you sure she was like i'm positive i was like since she said 2013 yeah that would be right that is right i, I said, do remember 2013? that now 2013 i was like no i said maybe 2015 2014 she was like i'm telling you it's 2013 it is yeah so she marches me into our closet she has an <laughs> air i kid you not she has an airbrush t-shirt hanging in her closet oh that's awesome it's like this infinity sign with the browning, <clears throat> the hunting. Color. I remember her wearing that shirt. It's got the browning buck and and the browning doe, uh-huh. and underneath it it says 2013. Like she she like pulls it out and says, "See, 2013. Told you." <laughs> you know what? I, I so nine years. The, I mean, I remember 2013 for this distinct reason. You would be at work. I would come home from school, and this would be a random Friday. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sitting here chilling out and having a good time, right? Mm. You come home from work. Hey, yo, Nate. What's up, man? Want to go to the beach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, that. Sure, happened. when? <laughs> he says, right now. <laughs> that happened a few times. That, that happened more than once. I think I, about two, two three, three times. times. I remember it, specifically, this was, I don't know if this was the, f- no, it wasn't the first time because you still had your, your diesel truck then. Yeah. But when you got the Nissan car, we rode with like two other Mustangs, didn't know it was Mustang week, and we raced with the oh, yeah, Mustangs all the way we down got, there. We got there in like two hours, a little over two hours. It's normally about a, it's normally about a three hour, three three, and a half, three, depends on how you drive. Three hour trip. Yeah, and we got there in two in a little four cylinder, a four cylinder Nissan, <laughs> Nissan Altima. Going down the back roads. I thought roads. the hubcaps was about to fly off that sucker. <laughs> Dude, we was going down all the back roads to the beach following like 16, 17. Mustang. Oh, dude, it was just 80, 90 miles an hour. I was like, well, they can't get us all, I don't guess. <laughs> and we, we ended up breaking up because they were at Broadway at the beach. We went to go meet, uh, you mm-hmm. know, Ash and her family yep, at Broadway. At Broadway, and that's where we split off at. We picked up right there. Man, it, it was, was in, uh, right? just out of Pageland. Yeah, just out of Pageland. Yeah, just below Pageland. I mean, all we the followed way them through Darlington, through uh, Florence, <clears throat> all of it. Everything, and then finally broke off. Two and a half hours later, or two hours later, right yeah, there at Broadway. Yeah, that was that was awesome. But uh, you know, I met Philip. I've known obviously me and Philip met back when we were at Northside Church, mm-hmm. back when we were this tall. Yeah. But uh, we didn't. After they left that church, I didn't ever talk to him again in 2014. Mm-hmm. He was already a father by then. Uh, Richard, I met him. He was already a father by then. Oh, I didn't I've know got. Was a, had, had a, yeah, he has a daughter. As a matter of fact, she's 11 know. or 12. Uh, wow. As a matter of fact. And uh, you were the only person I've actually gotten to watch, outside of Jordan probably, mm-hmm. that uh, I got to see you know, before being a father and now being a father. Tell me what that's like for you, like how that change has been different for you. I know you kind of got a taste of it with, with Carson, but what, is the, what has been that big transition to, I mean, single life to married life, really? 30 pounds. <laughs> You guys didn't see this, but before <laughs> before the episode even started, he pulled up his shirt and he like set it on the top of his stomach. And says, "This is how we're doing today." I said, "All right, man. You know, more power 30, to you." No, married life, uh, thirty pounds. That's, that's pretty much it. Oh, I think really? when I met Ashley, I was like one hundred and eighty-five, one hundred eighty-eight. I don't know if you remember the. I think it was two thousand fifteen. There's a picture of you wearing a Golden State Warrior shirt. Me, you, and Ashley sitting in the front seat of the Altima. I'm sitting in the back seat. And you look like you're... Oh, yeah. I, I had my arm up. I remember that picture. Yes. My arm literally looked like it was that big around. <laughs> yes. Baby face still. Were you you weren't a cop at that point, were you? Or were you out of out no, of I, Yeah, no, no. I was... Because I met Ashley when I was the police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember the story of you guys meeting, which I thought was hilarious. But... Uh, I didn't know if you were still a cop at that time or not, but that was when the Warriors Cavs thing was really getting started. Have you seen the picture from Chris, the Christmas picture we did? Love and Curry. When the Love and the Curry shirts. Yes, I look so different, dude. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like this big around. I look at that picture. I was like, I was really that skinny. That's funny because you were this big around, but I was this big around. <laughs> and now I'm this big around, and you're kind of this big around. Uh, well, I, these are the days How of our the roles life. have reversed. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. I don't wear all the little spoofy outfits that you did back in the day. Which hey, don't, looking, you don't look, hate on the swag, bro. Oh, don't man. Don't hate on the I remember the swag. having to take pictures. Of, he used to wear little nice little get-ups. I mean, suits. Blazers. Blazers. Khakis. I remember one time you got a navy blue blazer with the orange inside, and I had to take a picture with you and your Ray-Bans with Mitty at the top here. I had to take That's a picture. That. <laughs> back in those days. I still have that picture. Do you really? I, I, yeah. I, I believe it. I, I believe it, man. Let's see if I can find it. Um, but seriously, what what is it like being a dad now? Um, Con- p- compared to being, well, I mean, beforehand. Before having Carson in your life and ultimately having Bryson in your life? What? I, I mean, it's... I You can't say it's a part of growing up, but it's a... That's not really a part of growing up, because... <laughs> I honestly don't think you, well, I mean, yeah, you kind of don't really grow up until you have somebody else to depend on, or somebody's depending yeah, on Yeah, some, like somebody that is depending on you, more or less, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when it's just, like, even, so even when me and Ashley were dating, it's not like they were depending on me. Right. But when you get married, and then, so you're it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You and me and Ashley work together, you know, financially, but then financially we have responsibilities to take care of Carson. That Pepsi's getting to you. I'm telling you, but it's got me burping, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, you have to, your, you, you have to, your mindset switches. Yeah. So instead of just looking out for you and what you want to do that day or what you want to, you know, I want to go hang out with the guys on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, whatever night. Hmm. <clears throat> you have to take in, you know, I mean, your your life's different, your schedule's different. You know, you got to get up for 6.30 in the morning, take, wake up for, get the kids ready for school. Sporting was a big thing, especially Carson when he was younger in the uh, – in the um, and playing baseball when he yeah, was a Car- kid. Uh, I mean, he plays travel ball to this day. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I don't, I don't get to take it. I don't take him to practice. He practices uh, in York, in outside of oh, Rock really? Hill, with the T twenty four baseball team. Mm-hmm. It's a travel ball team, and uh, he practices on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, so, and that's at five thirty. So, right. we're still on the brown truck. So I don't have time to get off work, take him up there, but. Right. Travel tournaments every Saturday, Sunday, when the season gets kicked off, and it might be the tournaments might be in Rock Hill, they might be in Fort Mill. I think we got some coming up that are in Tennessee. Oh wow! So I mean, so I mean, you got to juggle, you got to juggle him playing baseball. Then you got a three-year-old that you got to, you know, he's going to want to do his old stuff. He's up running around. Got a ball of energy right there. (laughs) You can't sit him down beside of outside in a hundred degrees and put him in a chair and expect him to be interested in watching somebody play baseball for an hour and a half. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to find something to keep him occupied. Then, you know, you want to find something fun for him to do afterwards or before. What I think is always pretty cool is, and I heard this, you know, I can see similarities between me and my dad, you Mm -hmm. know, we're very similar, Mm -hmm. but I can see a lot of similarities between you and Bryson. You know, you can, you, it's like many you. You know, I can see many you in there. I think that's like the coolest part of uh, of seeing somebody's kids, like Philip with his with his kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just. I think that's kind of cool. What, what is that like when you look at him and it's like, man, that's a little mini. And you have those moments where it's like, that gum, that is me. That is a little bit of me in there. What is that like for you to see? Sometimes I want to knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's. I mean it's fun. I mean. Um, Again, uh, Ashley was going through my phone, looking. She went. She was looking for something. She came across one of the pictures, 
of Bryson and, you know, the Apple phones, the whole live photos. Yeah. And so I, Bryson would get my phone and take random photos or – and she will do the live photo. And then she saw something inside the live photo that would make a nice picture. Yeah. And then, I mean, I don't know, man. It's crazy. I, I, I have a feeling it is. I have a feeling at that, that moment it's just like – like yeah, that is me, and yeah, I mean, that's yeah. a little bit of me there. I think that I think that's pretty cool. Uh, he he'll start uh, he'll start pitching a field wanting something, and he'll look at me, and then he'll look at me, and then he'll flare his nose like he'll his nostrils on his nose. Oh, you do that? He'll all the time. flare them, and I just look at him like, oh my god, you get on my nerves because that's what every time like. Me and Ashley would be joking around, and she'll start getting on my nerves. I'll look at her, and I'll flare my nostrils. <laughs> and she'll look at me, and she'll, like, flare them out a little bit further. Why don't you? <laughs> I'll look at her, and be like, you lucky they don't go no further. <laughs> but, yeah, so I've seen, I've seen Bryson flare his nostrils when, he, when, I'm, when we're fussing back and forth because he don't want to listen. Right, right. And I think, um, you know, it's kind of going back to the, the baseball and everything, and you, you started – playing cornhole then you got carson playing cornhole now bryson every time the cornhole bags are out and the boards are out there he, he has a little mini set that he plays mm-hmm. with cornhole's become a pretty big deal in your life carson's life i mean your whole family's life i mean it really revolves around it a lot of times uh lately it seems like every cornhole is is life yeah, yeah. Um, i about to say i always see you guys because you guys go up to the acl headquarters mm-hmm. um what is that? The American Cornhole League? Is that American correct? Cornhole League, yeah. So that is, you know, everything that you see on ESPN, that's where these guys have been going to. They've been playing. They go into little open tournaments all the time. And yeah, we've been to West. Recently, we went to West Virginia a couple of weeks ago. Uh, not Yeah, about a month ago. Yeah. A month ago, we played, yeah, played in a big ACL open in West Virginia. Did pretty well. Uh me and Carson played in the world turn, uh, world championships. We finished two and three in our brackets. That's not bad. I mean, that's good stuff. So I mean, I mean, I know it's really take. I mean, you guys didn't really start playing until what, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, maybe. Uh, I think it's. I think it was. We started two years ago. That's I, when. That's when. Is that when you started, or both of y'all started? No. Um, his daddy Brian. Yeah. Um, made cornhole boards. That is for right. That is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made he made like professional cornhole boards for a while, and uh, that was one of the things that he got Carson for his birthday was a set of cornhole boards. Yeah, and then well, we had the you know tournament grade cornhole boards, but we didn't have tournament grade backs. So uh, Ashley had bought me uh, one of them. Uh, you know, you see them on internet and some of your like uh, college memorabilia stores or yeah, whatever yeah. like alumni hall or whatever yeah you know the cornhole boards they have in north carolina cornhole boards yeah right uh, it's tailgate something is the name brand of the boards tailgate collegiate is that it maybe maybe and but so a tournament cornhole board is three feet by two feet well the the tailgate boards are two feet by three feet so and so they're a little shorter mm-hmm. which and so i actually bought me a set of those probably two or three years before you know I remember Any, those. Anybody else any, before even it was just something I wanted, right? You know what I mean? Because it was cool and yeah. N- nobody, I didn't know what cornhole was when I got them, but I mean, yeah. I knew how to play, but I didn't know what it was. That so we got we had those, so I used the bags from those boards, which were cornfield, mm-hmm. and you know we played on the uh, tournament gray boards that Brian and built Carson then. Brian got into it a little bit, and then he actually got, like, the professional cornhole bags. Yeah. The ones that are actually filled with resin, plastic plastic beads. Yeah. And then it was just... It was there on It was downhill ever since. I was about to, <laughs> and I have to say, I mean, it, I got to give you guys credit. I mean, you're dedicated. I mean, you guys are going to these tournaments. Uh, Carson's gotten really good. Carson's uh, gotten pretty good. Yeah. Uh, he's going out there, and he's winning a lot of these tournaments. Uh, you're you're right there with him. I, I can see little Bryson running around. He's he's yeah, always Bryce. there. So, uh, tournament distance is 27 feet from front edge of board to front edge of board. Yeah. Bryson is probably throwing 20 feet. Shoot. 
Is that what the he's it, not consistently hitting the board, but I mean he can get when he. he but can get is it that back. I'm talking? Is that with the actual full bag or one of the little mini bags? Oh no, that's with cornhole bag, like regular. See cornhole that? Bags. Now that's good. I, I mean, that's one good. pound a piece. Wow, that is awesome, man. I, I have to say that's I, I mean that I guess that's been like your second love, you know, in your life, really, you know, hobby wise, because the first one is one that I was a big part of, and me and you both enjoyed a lot, mm. which was gaming. Yeah, video and games. this guy is the reason I play games to this day. As a matter, of, I mean, it's kind of full circle. I'm Tariel fan. This guy gaming. This guy. I mean, whatever else, man. But oh, when I mean, I was watching wrestling before you got into wrestling. I get it. You know what? As a matter of fact, you were the one who introduced me to it with uh, one of the SmackDown versus Raw games. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm probably. I did because I, I remember that because you played as Batista and I played as some I don't know who who I was at the time. Oh, here's a callback. Here's a callback. This is straight feelings, no facts. Okay. Okay. Number one is definitely Sting. <laughs> Sting? Sting. Oh, man. He, he, Going back to Richard's, Richard's yep. list? This has nothing to do with Richard's list, okay? This That's, is your list? This is mine. Oh, boy. I'm excited for this. So, this is feelings, no facts, because <laughs> I am not nearly into it as y'all guys. <laughs> I listened to that podcast. I was like, what are they even talking about? They're talking about, like, match it. I don't know. I don't know anything about that, yeah. but I played the video games, and that, that's why I like Sting so much. <laughs> and his little his little finishing move was awesome. I don't remember the, what the, it was. The Stinger, the Stinger. There you go. Like it was, he was like doing some kind of like leg locks and all that. I'm oh, like, yeah. whatever. So yeah, Sting, Goldberg. I can I can agree with Goldberg. Goldberg's good. Goldberg's that really spear good. is in, insane. That, that 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 is that is one of the most deadliest spears ever in a video game. It's crazy. Not only that, but in real life. I mean, I watched it. I, I was about to say you compare Goldberg's spear to to Bobby Lashley's or Edge's or anybody. Nah, Goldberg is the best spear. Go ahead. Then you got then you got the Rock. Microphone skills. I, I don't even, whatever. No. <laughs> You just go. Just, uh, just the purely, you're going purely he's, off the game. He, he was a great entertainer when I watched him. He is. He still is. Yeah, like what he's doing in the, in the cinema world right now. Oh, Hobbs and Shaw is questionable. Wait, wait. What? I love Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, it's questionable. Wow. Keep going. I'm I mean, already... I like the movie. It's just, it was, it was a little too over the top. Whatever. It doesn't even matter. Oh, well, that's a, that's a Fast and Furious franchise nowadays. Go ahead. Um, Stone Cold. Yeah. Who would be my fifth one? Come on, make it a good one. Make it a good one. By the way, what games are you re- like? Do you remember what games you're referencing to? I don't. I remember playing the SmackDown versus Raw games. That that was when like, like when you got ready to do like the finishing move, all you had to do was hit one button. Yeah. Like Why? select or something. Yeah. It used to like be select on the old like PlayStation One controller. Oh, wow. You used to hit select or something like that, mm-hmm. and then the finishing move would just take off. Right. I remember like all the little what highlights but you got before, before that. I had a wrestling game. This is where I played with Steam. You had to like hit like. A combination of buttons to do the finishing move, like Mortal Kombat style. Like Mortal Kombat style. Mm. I know you like Mortal Kombat. Too. Mortal Kombat style was nice. Yeah, I remember like doing the finishers and the guys just standing there doing like this, and then he's like <laughs> finish him, finish him. I'm like looking in the user man, I'm like I got this guy. <laughs> then I'm like okay, okay. Then I'm hitting all the buttons. Then I finish. And it's not yeah. like I'm just playing and remember. The you know, I move. even did that. Even in the most recent ones, they have basically like that user user manual in like the options menu so you can pause the game really quickly look at the combinations remember them unpause mm, yep, it yep, and then yep, do yep. it but uh-huh. the guy's still just sitting there so, uh, what, around. What's, what, what's the guy's name that gets on the top turn broken and does like the big old spiraling flips and everything for the finishing move mm. when you had Jeff Hardy with the swanton bomb the only one that did like a 360 star splash was somebody you would have never have known. That was Neville. But that's way past your time. That's like back back in 2015. I don't remember. Maybe Eddie Guerrero, maybe? No, might be. Maybe. Did he do a frog splash? No, I knew what the frog. I knew he did the frog splash. I looked. Yeah. No. <laughs> Is that how it went? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Did, what did he look like? I don't man, it was a video game. They all look the same because the graphics are terrible. Well, that, yeah, I'm about to say that was probably graphics 20 years ago. Um, what is shooting star? Does that sound like that shooting sound? star? Was um, F- 
Philip and Richard's really looking at you like, I know. Like, well, they're well, probably see, screaming at the screen well, right now. Bro, <laughs> here's the thing. I didn't even know the old, like, I never watched Attitude Era, which is probably where you're talking about. Especially with those characters, that and WCW because Sting. See, WCW. that's why I used to. Yeah, see, the WCW Sting is what I used to watch. Oh, see, I never watched WCW. I was not a WCW guy. I just, I, I wasn't. I don't, I don't know what a WCW guy is. I just, when Sting like wrestled, I was like, oh, that, I like. You this. know, he's still wrestling. His white is it the same guy though? Yes. Like the same guy from yes. like. He is 20, almost seventy years old, and this dude insane. is still putting on amazing matches. That's, that's we'll what just throw John Cena for the fifth one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could have put Randy Orton, but it's okay. Uh, see, 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 see. I liked Randy Orton like uh, when uh, he was like when he first started, and he was part of what, what Evolution. Was, yeah, and then like uh, he got like jumped by Batista and Triple H after yeah. he won the belt. And yeah, 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 the whole. <laughs> and then he dropped him on his head. And then Man, that just, was bad. And then they just beat him up. And I was like. Well, that was dumb. Yeah, and then they tried to turn the, him face, and, and then, then, then he work. turned him in. Then they they turned him what the Viper. Well, that came on in '09. Uh, he after that he went baby. They tried to take him baby face, but Orton is naturally not a baby face. He's just I mean he ain't a baby face. So he had really good message with The Undertaker. Fast forward a few years, 2008 comes, his big championship reign. That's where I started watching, actually started watching. And then he broke his collarbone, came back, and he, that's when he finally had the full sleeves. Mm -hmm. And eventually, like that, he's like, oh, JR, Jim Ross was the announcer, and he kept saying something. He's like, oh, he's doing something like a Viper, and it just eventually kind of stuck. Okay, so well, he's like take. the Viper Apex Pro. He's still the legend killer. Well, when he started, like, getting on his, like, hands and his knees and, like, beating the ground. Yeah. Man, that was probably the dumbest thing I've ever watched. I loved it. That was awesome, man. That's some good and stuff. And, like, he started, it looked like he was foaming from the mouth sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, Dude, this is dumb. And that's probably <laughs> when I got out. <laughs> well, that was probably about the time I got in. Uh, that and, um, you know you got, come on now, you, you can't tell me that some of these RKOs have not been spectacular to watch. Have you saw any good recent RKOs? Like the Seth Rollins RKO where he like s steps on the back of his head, gets launched up, Orton catches him? No. I've got a lot to show you. I, I feel like the RKO is just like a remade version of the uh, Stone Cold's DDT. Like when he kicks him in the stomach. And, ah. well, that is a stunner is yeah, what you're referring to. But uh, technically what Orton does is the same thing. It's what's called in the wrestling business a cutter. That's what that's called. So most people have done that. Diamond, uh, um, Diamond Dallas Page did it as well. I know that name. I'm not sure why. D he does the yoga stuff now. DDP. DDP yoga. That's him. Sure. Oh, I thought you would have known that by now. I feel like you're just kind of weird. But, well, uh, I don't know about yoga. I, Again, I don't. 30 pounds. <laughs> well, yoga, yeah, I mean, it's whatever. But uh, one game in particular that I think me and you, I mean, we, first off, we loved Call of Duties. We oh, loved yeah, Call we of loved Duty. the Call of Duty's was all. Oh, yeah. We Call met with nice. some some really cool people during the Call of Duty days. Was that was that World, World at War? War? World at War is when you met Jeff. Yep, Jeff, uh, who you're still friends with to this day. Size one, yeah, Skippy O two. Skip because of the peanut butter, that is his favorite peanut butter. <laughs> he literally has his, his screen name is Skippy because of the Skippy peanut butter. See, that's amazing. That's the kind of stuff that I like. People don't really, you know, people. Don't think about all the people that you could meet, especially back in the day. You know, now we got party chats and stuff that's you know real private. But back in those days, it was open lobbies, open mm. microphones, open, open mm. mics. Oh my gosh, the the smack talk this. in the lobbies. Was oh, dude, ridiculous. Do you remember a guy? And I mentioned this to um, Philip and Richard the other day. We had a production meeting. This is back in Modern Warfare Two. Let's see if how good you remember. A guy by the name was a really good player. By the name of Mr. Philly Cheese Stick. Do you remember that guy? Mr. Philly Cheese I know it rings a bell to you. Because he was, he was really good at Call of Duty, and then all of a sudden he wiped off the face of the earth, never saw him again, never heard of him again, never heard from him again. We used to love this guy. No, I don't. I'm, I'm, the only people I'm thinking about is uh, the Freeman brothers, but... Oh, Col uh, uh, Colt Team Freeman. Rashad. Team Rashad. There and Team go. Rampage. There you go. God, I love those guys. Oh, that was based off the uh, UFC uh, 
the UFC. Oh, uh, the, the Ultimate Fighter at that the, time. The Ultimate Fighter, Team Rashad and Team Rampage. See, that's I liked. Uh, me and Paul was talking about that the other day. Rampage Jackson loved that guy. Yeah, really loved it, and he was really good in the newest version of the A Team. Sorry, I, I know people don't like that um, movie, but I do. One of the best knockouts. Oh, dude, yeah. I just remember the one time where he walked up to the blue door. He was mad, and he. Well, oh no, I'm talking about. I think he was still fighting in Pride. That Kimbo slice. Yeah, that dude anyway, was nasty. Back in the street fighter. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Team uh, Rampage was. I can't even remember who was fighting, but I'm pretty sure it was Pride. Dude had him in a triangle. Is this where he picked him up? Yeah. So, uh, I'm you're familiar with how a triangle works? Right, right, right. So, very deadly, by the way. Um, Rampage had enough strength in his legs to pick hump, pick dude up. So when Rampage stands up, dude's he's still in the triangle, uh-huh. mind you. So guy was pretty much up here, and he Drops. just brings him down. And that dude was never the same again. Never Knocks him same. out right there. What people don't, if people don't understand, the triangle is used a combination of your legs and kind of your hands to hold a leg. But basically, what it does uh-huh. is it pins legs against your neck and your arm to kind of create a tri- it's kind of hard to explain you're creating a triangle with your legs with a dude's head in the, in the middle <laughs> sounds horrible i know but it's a sum- it's a very deadly submission move if you get if you get a hold of it unless you are like rampage who has enough strength to get yourself he up so stand cool. up think about it. you're being choked as i mean with somebody pow- everybody's legs are powerful and people's legs are powerful it's probably what the most strongest muscle in the body is the legs so thinking about that tightening down on your head and neck you're being choked out and you have enough strength and wherewithal to get yourself up have just to stand up with this dude so you have to pick his body weight up yours up and you're being choked and drop this guy that was it's on youtube check it out yeah it is look up the uh, look up the weight guy all you gotta do is youtube uh rashad triangle i think rampage slam (laughs) <laughs> that is awesome. Type in Rampage Slam and it'll come up. Well, back to the games. Slam makes me think of a Titan Smash back in Destiny. Ooh, yeah. Destiny. I know. Destiny was a great game. Me Destiny and you both loved that. That was, I think that was <laughs> one of the last games you played. Uh, that in Fortnite. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. Fortnite, Fortnite right at the end, right before Bryson was born. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, most of most of everything I played was Destiny. And dude, Destiny was we kind of touched on it a little bit when we were talking on the phone the other day. But this is original. This is Destiny Two. I think did you play a little bit of Destiny Two? Yes, I played Destiny Two. I didn't know if you did or not. I remember. Yeah, man, we had the conversation when me and Chris went flawless on the very first night in uh, the Trials of the Nine. Oh, that's right. That's when they changed the Trials of Osiris from the lighthouse to, like, the weird-looking woman. Yeah, the little robot-looking lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's one thing I am still wish. I'm still salty about I never got. <laughs> Fun facts. If anybody knows about the Trials of Osiris, it was this big, multi- sweaty multiplayer. 3v3? 3v3, where your level in the game, for people that don't really know, it was light levels and everything, but mattered. What kind of weapons you used matter, your armor, everything that you had on you mattered. And uh, you had to win nine straight games, nine straight multiplayer games. Now, these are some of the best of the best coming out here to play. And you had to win nine straight times in order to go to what was called the Lighthouse, where you got all kinds of cool gear, uh, stuff you would never ever find any other time. That's the only place you can actually get it. They had a, didn't they have no. Lighthouse exclusives? See. Yeah, yeah, you had White House exclusives, armor, weapons. Um, yeah, calling cards. Was it, was it? I, yeah, I guess it is flawless. So you had to win nine without losing. Yeah, that's what it was called. It was flawless. For some reason, I'm thinking you only had to win nine without losing three. Oh, there was a card in there where you could. It was kind of like a mulligan card, if you remember correctly. You got it, and if you lost the game, you use that mulligan card, so you still stayed. No, that might be one thing. That's right. It's one. You could. You only get it once, though. You could only get it once, and once you use it, that was it. You couldn't get it anymore the rest of the weekend. But me, him, and a a, a friend of ours, Craig. Craig, uh, was yeah. it Craig that, did was he it? just get married? By the way, 
married or, or at least engaged. engaged. Yeah, I know he's engaged. I think he's married. I think he's married. Married. Yeah. Okay. Down in Florida. Yeah. So we were playing, and we were just saying, "Oh, we're just gonna pray." This is the first time I had ever I had heard about the trials of Osiris. This guy played it, talked to me about it all the time. Oh man, you need to do trials. You need to do trials. I'm like, well, okay. I was more into like the strikes and the. Um, and the raids, I loved the raids when I finally got in. Having a group for raids was amazing, oh, yes. dude. Just four hours of, I mean, just intense gameplay. It was fun, uh, but at the end, oh, we were talking about doing the trials. We we're like, okay, well, we'll get you in there, get you used to it. We're not gonna get our cards. <laughs> we're not gonna get our cards. We go in and we win nine straight. So I did all, I did everything I needed to do. I won nine straight games of Trials of Osiris. Didn't get to go to the lighthouse because I didn't get the card for no, it. Wouldn't, wouldn't it have been, it would have been eight straight because there was a, so you had three power-ups you could buy with your strange coins. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. You got a free win. And I think that's the one you didn't buy. I don't think you bought the free win. Because no, I didn't even. I didn't even get the card because we had, said we had to get the card in order to go play. Oh, you're right. So I never got any of the other stuff. So I never got the Mulligan card, the free win. I can't remember what the other one. Oh man, that is right. So technically, I, I I won, and then I get all that stuff, and I never win again. Never to this day, never got to go. Never been flawless on trials of his eyes. <laughs> And the one time I got flawless, it didn't count. Almost didn't flawless. Count. I was almost there. I, if I would have had the card, it would have been nice. Because we won eight straight. Me and Craig went to the lighthouse because we just had to put their strange cards. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan didn't have nothing. I, I, didn't have like, I need one more win, guys. <laughs> and we lost the very next one. <laughs> oh, man. This is hor- that's horrible, man. This is horrible. Horrible. No, that was great. Uh, the, no, it, it really was. I have to say, playing in the Crucible and uh, the Nightfall strikes that you would have. Yeah, the Nightfalls. Uh, that was that was awesome. And, and meeting a whole bunch. I mean, I remember we got into a Facebook group. It was called Fire Team Chat. As a matter of fact, I'm still a part of that chat. The Fire Team yeah, Chat. Yeah, not part of that anymore. Um, and you would just, hey, I need X amount of people to do a strike or do some sort of mission in the game. You hook up with these people, and then you end up meeting some pretty cool people through it and meeting good friends, and uh, you eventually made the switch over to Xbox, and uh, we met a whole slew of other people uh, that we became friends with. I mean, for the longest time, I mean... Oh, I can't remember his name now. Uh, I know exactly who you're talking about. Dondi? Don- there was one called Dondi, wasn't there? Yeah, that was with uh, that was with the division, though. Oh yeah, you did get into the division. Yeah. I didn't never get into that really because you you were heavy into the division. Now that I remember, yeah, there for a while I was. I got into uh, King. I don't know some big. There was like faction, like clan, whatever. I'm glad you brought that you up. You had like clan tags, you know. Yeah. So you'd have L O K Legion of Kings. Legion, there it is. I remember you saying that to me. L-O- yeah. I was L O K whatever top L O K Top Gun. I think you eventually became I Expose. Yeah, that was my uh, uh, Expo- Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah, that was I changed it. I changed it when I got into Fortnite because it looked more O G. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was the that was the thing. You, oh, everybody man. wanted like O G screen names. Yeah, if you had like an X or a Z in your name, you're, you're cool, quote unquote. I didn't know what that whole thing was, but yeah, I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought up the clan stuff. That brings me back to, um, do you remember back in Call of Duty Ghosts, Clan Wars? Yes. The app you used to get. Yes. I don't understand why they got rid of that. That was so cool. You know, we were uh, Sons of Liberty. That's who we were. That's it who was. We were. It was me, you. Well, we had sons in the clan tag. Remember? Oh yeah, well, I got the. Right yeah, it was, it was me, SLS. you, Skip, Biggie, Willie, Skip. I already said Skip, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Uh, FLL Omega, um, Marissa. Marissa. Marissa uh, May, yeah, and um, God, who else is in there? A uh, beast. 
Ryan. Uh, Beast138. Uh, uh, Blue Eyed Devil. Blue Eyed Devil. That's uh, eight. It's had, eight people. We had a couple more, uh, but they were really. You had to. You know, you remember how it worked. Like yeah. you had to play, you had to win so many games to like try to take it over. Then you, right. you took it over, you got so many points. Yeah. So in you the really app, had to, you, you had know. a you had an app in your phone, and it was like a map with flags on it, and each flag was a game type, and you had to go win. Let's say, oh, to capture this flag and to capture this map, you had to go win. X amount of games in Kill Confirmed, and then you had to go over here. So what we would eventually do is we would kind of break up into pieces and go cap. I remember when we used to run that map a lot. We used to do really yeah, good. We, we did for a while until we got into like the higher division, like the you know because they're yeah. tiered base, you know. Right, right, right. Tiered base. So when we got into that higher division, we really the number of people we had versus. The number of people them other the clans we was going against had they just had the ability because for every like say you know fire team is six, so if all six people in your team, if you run a fire team of six and go play, and you win, well you get you get six points towards capturing that flag. Right. So I mean, if you can't if you ain't got six on, yeah. then it was it was rough. You're, it's four. You you get four, then the next te- the team you're facing is getting six if they're playing. Oh, dude, yeah. And I remember that it was or, just a weekend of clan war. It was yeah. like, what, every other weekend or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Then if you won, you got gear. Like you got you got, you got special like stuff. Skin. You had gear. Like camo and you whatnot. You gear camoed out or something. But uh, Call of Duty Ghost was a big game for us because not only did we have clan wars, but we had a third mode. Yeah. I had a third mode on there called Extinction, which to this day... It's probably the funnest thing Call of Duty ever brought. I'd put it up there, honestly. If if you guys never played Extinction, man, how is it not? It's it's it's, it's so fun. Facts, facts with feelings. How is Extinction not the best game? The best f- anything Call of Duty's ever brought. Well, I guess you'd have to look at it. Kind of, it's all about perspective, really. Honestly, because uh, so you're more. Objective based. You're an objective based guy. And I mean, I like killing people just as much as the next guy. <laughs> That's a healthy thing. But but, uh, I, but extinction. I mean, you had to kill. You had to kill stuff there. Yeah, I mean, you had to knock out the aliens and everything to do just to get. So the whole point of it was is you would start in one spot and you would work your way through different territories, fighting this alien race that had come through. And eventually try to get to the to the end. I remember I'm, I'm basing it off the first map mm-hmm. where you got all the way down into that that crater. Yeah, the crater. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the, basically the whole objective of the game, and it had a nice story with it too. Surprisingly, it actually had a pretty cool story with it, where you were trying to defeat this alien race that had come in and was trying to take over. And um, I thought it was I, I liked how cool it was objective wise. How okay, everybody had a job. So like, I'm a medic. You're a engineer or whatnot and everybody had a role and you in those roles you unite together and figure out the best plan because it wasn't just oh i'm just gonna run in here do this come back out no it was was strategy to it there was a lot of there was a lot of different strategy to it um so (laughs) you sleeping over there (laughs) uh my father has walked in and he's sitting over here and just about knocked out he's He's over here snapping, but uh, good to on. have him. Good to have him. Hanging in, on in. for dear life. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. I saw you looking over there. Uh, <laughs> here, there, here. <laughs> <laughs> he had a he had an early morning this morning. An early morning, early morning. <clears throat> but uh, for me, I always enjoyed zombies. Zombies was like What's my top. I, like zombies is fun, but honestly, you you can't win. No, I think that's the cool part about you it. You can it's never see, win. It's to see how long you know. In the end, you're gonna you're gonna go down. But in that same thing, it's like how long can how long can I stay away from that? How long can I put that off? Survival. How long can you can you do that? I, I enjoyed that the most. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that. But there, <clears throat> like that map I was telling, you, I literally we literally, I can't remember. It was like level one. We was over a hundred, mm-hmm. and it took hours. 
Was so it? I played hours to lose. There was no win. You couldn't win. They just kept coming. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the cool part. They just keep coming. No, no what? Because but, uh, eventually, you're like these people, it's kind of end sometime, right? Yeah. Um, well, see, here's the cool thing that I like. So in bigger maps, so maps like I'd say Ascension, uh, Shangri La. Uh, Shangri La is a big one. Darice, even though it kind of in a sense you could do that with Darice, you get put into a situation where you have to run too. So I like that. I like that because uh, I remember like Knock Duran Toten, the very original map. One thing you did is you got up into that corner, you sat there, and you played and played and played and played and played. I'm like, okay, that that that's fun. But for me, I like the bigger maps, and even now, like Black Ops Four, got me pretty good. They they had a pretty good. Um, map choice I think but there was one called nine it was like you're in ancient Sparta and uh, there is no play but you're also trying to do objectives around the map mm-hmm. I like that too that and they kind of have like boss levels in a sense that kind of come out yeah so you know ultimately you're going to go down but there's little objectives that you can do and you're never able to sit really in one spot you have to keep moving because but you're still going to lose I know but I like the whole idea of okay I can do. How long is it going to take for these guys to knock me down? Like I'm better than these guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go down sometime, but I'm gonna put it off as long as I can. With extinction, which was really fun, I really enjoyed. I put it just a tier down because once you figured out the strategy, mm-hmm. it was easy at that point. Once you figured it out. That was. <clears throat> Do you ever play the last one? I never got to play the last one. I always wanted. to I play I mean, the last, last one, one is beatable, but the last one, I I, I can't remember. The last one I thought was the hardest because mm-hmm. I only ever beat it once, maybe twice. Oh, really? Skippy never beat it. Wow, never I'm surprised. Beat it. It, as far as I as far as I know, when I when we quit playing, yeah, never never finished the trilogy. Wow, I, I know it I, was hard. It, yeah the the second one, it was the second or the third one was pretty difficult. The, I thought the third one was the last one. It was with the uh, there was like these three alien. Was it three or was it four? Might have been three or four. I don't know. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been it's been 2013. They were, they were tall, silvery. Yeah, they're like the ancient ones or something. And you, had, you killed ones. one, then the place went berserk, and then you had to do something else to kill another, and then the place went berserk again. Yeah, yeah, it was it wasn't easy. No, no, it, it, there was some <clears> times <throat> it got really hard. I remember the the kind of the the hardest part, and I thought was like the most thrilling was in the very first map. After you do the last level, the now you got to you got to run. The back. run back was fun. The run back was fun and difficult. If you got yeah. if you slowed up any, that was a wrap. You're done. You're getting eaten. You're <laughs> it's over with. Uh, getting back to that, uh, getting back to the helicopter and waiting for the helicopter to come in was yeah, that, uh, rough. Yeah, that, that was, was that was. I forgot really all about rough. that, but no, I didn't forget about it. But yeah, that run back was that, the run back was fun. Yeah, dude, I I, I love that run back, and because um, if you didn't have the right. Load out. I remember we and used the to, right like personnel. Yeah, like, you could die quick, especially at the checkpoints when you had to wait for the you had to wait for the next. Yeah, you know the the gate, the next gate. Goes. I don't know if you remember we used to set up like little claymores. We would run because mm-hmm. you had a thing in between, like a I guess like an intermission in between levels. You could start the next level, but we we would go set up and set up claymores and whatever we could to help kind of stay out, keep them off of your tail as you're trying to run out of there. But those moments getting out, if you went down, nine times out of ten, you wasn't getting picked back up. Mm-hmm. You not, were getting... Not on, not on the run out. No. Um, and I remember there was one time only one of us made it out. I think it was you that made it out that day. And uh, everybody got knocked down except for the one. I had the quick feet. Yeah. <laughs> quick feet, quick hands. Oh, man. But, you know, I think it's it's different not seeing you play games. Uh, anymore, especially. I mean, there's a lot that's happened, yeah, you know, since then. I mean, yeah. I mean, life I, happens. Part, like, of, part of life. Man. So, I mean, I mean, I, I want the one game I would, I would play is probably still probably be Destiny because it's it's the one stop shop. It is. There was you everything got, in there. You got multiplayer. You got competitive multiplayer. You got story modes. Then you got the big time raids. Mm-hmm. 
I think the community and it's just one of the one of the purest communities you've ever seen. That and I think there's probably one more game you'd come back for. Hogwarts. What? The Hogwarts Harry Potter game. Uh, I saw that. I don't know how fun it would be though. I don't know. I don't. I never watched that. I know that was all you. But yeah, I like Harry Potter. Yeah, I always, see. I was strictly Lord of the Rings. That's I all like I was. Well, it was. I was strictly Lord of the Rings. That's I love because it. you never gave Harry Potter a chance. I watched two or three of them with you. There's no way you watched two or three of them. Yeah, I watched them with you. You might have watched some of the first ones. Thought it was dumb. I don't ever remember you watching Chamber of Secrets or Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay, that's sad. That's bad. Well, I mean, I guess I, I can I can tell you a lot of things about the Lord of the Rings. I mean, I, we're, we're even on that scale. We're, we're pretty much even on the, the nerd scale, I guess you could say. But hey, have you saw the new uh, series coming out for Lord of the Rings? Um, Prime Amazon. Video? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you September second. September second. Okay, I said. I'm pretty sure that it's September second because I've been I've been looking. Yeah. I'm just I'm curious to see what they do there. Really curious but to see what they do. That's bef- That's way before. That's before, uh, Sauron. Rockets into Mount Doom, right? Yeah, I think that kind of leads up to it. Yeah, Honestly, I, I think that series is helping kind of lead up to it a little bit. Right, that's what I thought. Yeah, uh, I don't. I just hope they're not going to go super crazy with it. You know. Yeah, I, I would hope not. But I mean, it's time. I mean, you never want stuff like that. You know what I mean? You never want stuff like that. And so you had Lord of the Rings, and then you had the prequel of The Hobbit. Yeah. And then you you're know like, what, what would, else? You know, you know what, what I would mean? love to have saw? And they even talked about this one time. I don't know if you remember very many it, pfft, words. I don't know if you remember in the very end of the, the Battle of the Five Armies, the last, mm-hmm. the third Hobbit. Mm-hmm. Legolas goes to his dad, and his dad tells him to go find this young Dunedain man, mm-hmm. hinting to Aragorn that he right. says he's going to be a great man one day. I want because there's sixty years in between. I wonder what happened because in that time, the if I remember correctly, it's, if I remember history correctly, the Dunedain kingdom was destroyed during that time. Mm-hmm. So Aragorn's people was destroyed. He also went back to Gondor and rode with Gondor secretly under a different name. And also rode with Rohan. If you remember, in um, this was in an extended part in the Two Towers, Aragorn's sitting there sharpening his blade, and Eowyn comes up and yeah, gives yeah. him something to eat, and she says, "Oh, you must be eighty. He says, "Eighty-seven. He says, "I, uh, you know, I used to ride with your uh, grandfather, Fanger." I'm like, I would like to see an Aragorn story. Unfortunately, I think Viggo Mortensen's probably a little bit older for that now, but yeah, the, the yeah. original actor. You'd have to, you'd have to use. Somebody a different. young look alike, or You're right? Or not, I mean, you even got to look alike. I'm just a young, long, long, dark haired. Maybe even with CGI, they could pull it off. Yeah, but, yeah. I don't know. It, it it would be interesting to see for sure. I think. Yeah, I mean, there's always you always feel like there's a lot left on the bone with that one. Oh, dude, yeah, J.R. Tolkien. Did you ever see the Tolkien movie? Mm. I I haven't either, but I've wanted to see it. You know, kind of who he was and how he created everything that he created. Because, I mean, he created the Lord of the Rings, yes. He created the Hobbit, yes. But he created basically a lineage like a a lineage Mm -hmm. uh, of stuff that's never even mentioned in the movies that was kind of mentioned in the books. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. There's, it's like he created a whole nother world and gave it history for thousands of years. It was crazy the way he did that. Yeah. I'm I'm interested to watch it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna give it a shot. I think me and Richard said something about maybe giving it a shot on a podcast, talking about it a little bit more, but Yeah. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. But buddy, I gotta appreciate you for coming out here, man. This is this is fun. I wanted to get you on. Uh you had mentioned it to me, I think after episode three. And then I did four and I said, Why not? It's about time. It was about time. It was about daggum time. Maybe maybe we'll have to do this. We'll we'll do it again. We'll we'll say we'll have to do this again. Uh, Anyway, guys, we want to thank you all for watching. Again, thank you, good sir. I'm surprised that we matched today. I didn't even know that was going to happen. I thought that was kind of cool. If you enjoyed, be sure and leave a like, comment, subscribe. Keep in tune for uh, more of these NL10 Offscript podcasts coming pretty soon. This is episode five. The real five. This is the actual five. I know in, uh, in episode four I said it was five. I got my whole stuff mixed up. This is five this time, I promise. Um, we got some, I got some cool things working. 
behind the scenes that you guys are getting ready to see pretty soon. Maybe a teaser for something pretty soon. And I'm kind of looking at it over there. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I have I'll a watch. Huh? I said, I guess I'll watch. <laughs> I have or a. Listen, whatever. Uh, or if it helps, I have another film session right after this one. So it's going to be fun. Thank you all for watching. And we will see you all.